All right. Hello, guys, and glad to have you on board again today. Well, even though, to be honest, uh, I don't think everyone is at a celebration moment today. Uh, I would like to cover the post FTX era and uh, whatever happens now. I wish I could have recorded that video earlier, but I had my son at home yesterday and it was very complicated to try doing such a thing. So anyway, rather now than any uh, later, but uh, I've got some few things to say first. So first of all, I am seriously um, disappointed by the usual uh, same old thing in the social medias and the absolutely outrageous coverage there is uh, of such a things at little once in a while. So I hate saying that, but I think I have to. I've seen some behavior being so outrageously dangerous in terms of sociopathic types of behavior and so on. Those who come in social media as to say, well, now is the time to load up the portfolios. Now's the time to get rich, folks. Oh, look at how much money I made short selling this FTX fuck show. Yeah, great, great. You sick fucker. I'd like to be just honest, okay? Some people just lost most of their savings or whatever. Some people don't even know if they're going to be able to open their account again to just get a bit of it or if and everything just vanished. So just at some point, some people got absolutely destroyed. Do you really think this is an appropriate time to go onto social media to brag about your nice trades? So I would say go fuck yourselves to these, to these persons. And just a little once in a while, try to think about some other human beings who might be suffering like crazy at the moment. And just try to be at least for a second comprehensive. Just one message in here, okay? Because really, 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 I, I think that on a human level, whatever happened during the latest 48 hours is catastrophic. That's one thing. Second thing, of course, we're going to have a look at charts. This is what I do best. So this is what I'm going to try doing. I'm not going to just tell the story like a dozen times it's been covered everywhere. So I assume that you guys know everything about what happened with FTX and uh, uh, those things. What I'm going to be trying doing in here is looking at the charts to try uh, removing all the bullshit that I've seen and that just makes absolute no sense. Uh, uh, on the second hand, of course, I'll also say some pure raw apologies. I've made my stance on some um, matters that I never thought we would go even harder than the things that we've been through before, the three ACs and the like. I never thought we would go anywhere beyond that. I thought the worst was behind us and that therefore the pullback mechanisms will start to put themselves into motion. Basically, AKA building a bottom out of nowhere, out of an extremely bearish sentiment, just because everyone's anticipating the worst to keep on coming uh, without uh, uh, ever happening. The thing is that I was damn fucking wrong because, well, it's the shit show now. We, we've got the Lehman moment of crypto. It, it's Mt. Gox squared. Yes, it's full of shit. Yes, it's a shit show. And yes, the magnitude of whatever's gonna happen next is unmeasurable. But if I look at the charts, because no matter what happened, I need to look at the charts and to put things into context and to, into perspective. I see people saying, well, we're at the Lehman moment. We're at the beginning of 2008. Uh, it's just the beginning. We're going to explode, folks. We're going to go to the cave. Well, I'd like to say uh, we're already down the cave, folks. So at some point, I think my personal opinion might require a little bit more patience before opening your mouth and saying absolute nonsense. So I'll try to be rational looking at the charts and tell you what I think about these things. Uh, 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 because to be honest, I can't give you a rational conclusion for now, but I can give you the time frames and the time scales in which it makes sense. So uh, uh, of course, uh, people talk about that bear market and so on. Like I've always said, uh, there, there's no such a thing as a bear market after a bull market. The only thing in which it can happen going bull to bear is when the market has created absolute outrageous valuation, which was definitely the case for some markets, Solana being among those, which is basically we've gone out to the moon and basically down to the cave uh, without ranging in between. So basically this has never been the true value of Solana because we failed to build a range. Okay. Though in that perspective, we go back to the old, uh, to the previous known values. And now like we tried to build a bottom out of here, we are starting to fail. We can see the way it's been going up 
absolutely stupid. You can see that the uh, context boxes are just broken, 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 broken. And then you can see that on the downside, it is more of a long and painful consolidation. So we go up quick and we rise back down, um, or we fall back down to earth very slowly. So it's not like the same old stuff in which we grind our way up and we take the elevator down. It's pretty much the opposite for crypto. We take the elevator up and we take the stairs down. So this is really how it gets more painful, psychologically speaking, because basically we're just where we were back in 2021. Um, uh, but we took a way, way longer step down than it took us to go up. So there's way more excitement and therefore the pain is much more profound, even though we're still trading the same level. So just row technicals, okay? We're just back to where we were uh, uh, two years before. So this is not ne nearly the end of the world. It's just, well, we might have overvalued some of these things. Solana definitely was overvalued. I always said it. Okay, so doubt out of the mind. What we can say now is that if we study the sequence of that bear market, we can see that there are three accelerations, one, two, and now the third one is being attempted. So I would like to say things quickly, okay? I could call this one a bear market because there would be three impulses to the downside, okay? Two, after a bull one, would be a consolidation before recovery and eventually going up later. That's the reason why I firmly opposed all the time that we were not in a bear market. This was nothing close to 2008, uh, 2018. And we don't have to stand there until Bitcoin's halving shows up or whatever. I've made my arguments about that. But like I said, I don't know the future more than anyone else. So I always risk manage. The thing is that I had clear evidence that this was just a very painful consolidation for most of the good assets they follow. Some others like Solana, I've always made it clear. I don't know about Solana. I've always said, as long as we maintain this third range boundary in here on that bearish second leg down, we don't have to worry too much about this thing. It may recover with the rest of the market. It's still a good project. I mean, Solana is a solid blockchain and it has lots of partnerships with Googles and the like. So the recent activity on Solana wasn't that bad. The thing is that, of course, SPF, FTX, Alameda's research, Solana, they were all very intrinsically related at some point. And that's the reason why it made and creates collateral damage. Solana is just suffering like crazy fuck of that thing just because, well, no one think about Solana, the project. Everyone just thinks about all the collateral damage that will happen because everything has to be unwinded. Everyone is going to have to be liquidated and they hold probably a lot of Solana due to the close proximity with SPF, Alameda's, all of of this kind of uh, uh, thing. So if that's really the motive, like I would say, I understand price is going down because there will be more sellers than buyers. It's just raw mathematics of price movement. But the thing is that that doesn't change anything about value. In order to settle value, you need to put things into context. And I would say if this truly is a bear market, meaning Solana is just full of shit all along and over time we'll just forget about this project. It was just no more than the uh, Yahoo of dot coms. It's a uh, boom and bust. And if it's really the case, then I'd like to see that third impulse pushing through. That means we've got one close in here, which is significant. We've gone straight up to down in terms of momentum. So this is no more than just an external catalyst. So in order to settle value, I'd like to see these context boxes being closed with prices below. If that happens, meaning that if by the end of November, because these are monthly context boxes, if the November's monthly candle closes, show us prices at five billion dollars for solana i personally will consider this project in a bear market meaning three down impulses after a bull market so bull market to bear market meaning that this thing will never recover until it goes through the same old pain phase that i showed you back then in bitcoin in 2018 meaning that this was supposed to be the hope phase, but I see absolutely no hope. Normally the hope phase retraces right up to this level. So this is the reason why I personally don't think Solana is uh, following a crash pattern. I just think it's the collateral damage of SBF. And in that perspective, well, graphically speaking, I don't right now pull the plug to say this is terminated. We're, we're closing out there, it's, it's the end of the game. So I would say I'm waiting for the end of November, but for whatever reason, if this project is oversold by still being good, and if by the end of November, we'll go close right back up above the support, to be honest, this will be just no more than a final excess on the chart, which is we never settle value in here. We just break because of an external catalyst. We go right back to the previous value area, and then we start to retrace. If that's what the future is made out of, 
And once again, all the bullshit scam about uh, SPF, uh, Solon, it was just a full of shit project and so on. I don't really agree with that. To be honest, I think the chart will tell me the answer. And it's just a matter of supply and demand. Right now, we're full of supply because there are lots of supply that's arriving because of liquidation and stuff like that. The question is the demand. We'll see all about that. If the demand doesn't show up before the end of November, to be honest, I will consider Solana pulled out of my portfolio for a long time. Meaning that that's basically I'll still hold it because there's a portion of it that I'll never sell. But the thing is that I will not consider putting a single dollar in this project anymore until probably half of next year. And I'm going to wait the same old patterns that I told you to wait for in Bitcoin back in 2018. Basically, normally there's supposed to be a hope phase, which we totally didn't do. Uh, and then comes the final crash and the desert crossing phase, meaning that I would like to see the volatility of this project entirely disappearing. Like no one even talk about that anymore, just like Bitcoin did back then in 2018. Okay, remember, that's exactly what I told you. This was a consistent level for drawing out of liquidity, absolutely no liquidity, uh, no liquidity, absolutely no volatility. And the second moment was this one. And this is the one I decided to jump in, in terms of Bitcoin. So I think Solana might either be there, meaning that we're just in a fake out. But remember that back then, in terms of bear market, we were really, really not that far. Today, it looks to me like Solana is already there and everyone is just thinking like, well, okay, it's there, so we're going to go there. Well, to be honest, I think we could just go the opposite way around. If there's just a bit of demand, everyone has sold already. So it's really that simple. There's no one else to sell, to sell now. Yeah, there's no one else to solve. So this is basically, if there's really value in this project, and if there's just a little bit of demand, just a bit of capital be pulled in will push prices right up by, very quickly. So before judging anything, I would say, boys, take some time and understand that this at least requires a monthly close. Okay, that out of the way for the rest of the market, because this is where I see a shit load of absolutely outrageous coverage. So in terms of Bitcoin, did we do anything? Look at the same context, okay? Daily one, we can see the bearish impulse, the first one that fucked up the bull market, which was definitely rising too quickly. We've stabilized the value, try to break again, being pushed out of the way very violently. This is where the Fed decided to fuck us up afterwards. We go immediately back to the moving average. We break it to the, to the downside, very aggressive, two legs down in terms of very limited intrinsic cons uh, uh, um, consolidation. It's just, well, we fuck you up in a straight line. There's no way you can get out. There's no third range boundary treatment to risk manage. It's just up and down. And it's very, very dramatic because we go this into these straight lines. Then what I said then is that as long as we maintain prices over the third range boundary, same old thing as Solana, okay? There's nothing to worry about. And I don't think we're going to get a third straight leg, which would consider Bitcoin being the same old stuff as Solana, meaning it's gone bullish to bearish, which means it's a bubble crash or whatever, but it's an unconventional way of trading. That's generally the sign that there's a range at best but certainly not a bullish trend. You can't go from bullish trend to bearish trend. It just simply doesn't work out that way. So this is what I'm really concerned about now, because of course I could just be wrong. Like I said, I don't know the future. I could just be wrong and I will readjust accordingly. If we're already at the final target rate for cryptos, then that means this is the value of Bitcoin. We'll never go ever, ever too far away from 40,000. Because if we do bull trend to bear trend, well, like I said, this is the bull crack scenario. And that means, in my personal opinion, that at a critical level that we're in now, it's going to take years before we actually say goodbye to 40,000 level area. Otherwise, this is just pure full of shit of, out of an external catalyst that happens by the end of a consolidation, meaning that despite the tremendous uh, um, profoundness and the deep, uh, the deep implications there is with FTX. And there's certainly a shitload of rippling effects that could occur. That doesn't mean they will. That also means the market at its current stage now is not on the verge of 2008. We've already 2008 already. So in that perspective, it's really more about looking at what the chart says. The chart tells me I can clearly see the two bearish impulse, the consolidative wave from the bullish trend. So for now, it's just a very painful deep and violent pullback and we've consolidated this area for a very long time now we're trying to break because of a catalyst that's the reason because of a catalyst 
And I've seen some people bragging about, well, we've anticipated that. We knew we're going to go lower, right? Shit like that. Well, did you anticipate FTX? No, certainly you did not. What you anticipated is that you will have a bear market uh, anyway, because that's what you thought. You, Like I said, there were two camps back then. Those who thought we would be in a bear market and that anyhow and anyway, we still were missing of a final leg down. There were the others like me thinking we're in new consolidation, meaning two very dangerous impulsive wave, but there's not gonna be a third one. It's too early to consider that you won that battle, folks. That's what I'm saying today. Because in order to do this, to be honest, you don't really have a lot of, of arguments. The market is trying to go down, but the cycle is still bullish. We're going from up to down in terms of momentum, which is no more than a momentum shakeout, meaning that in less than an average cycle, which is eight uh, uh, candles, we've gone from overbought to oversold. This is basically nothing more than just short-term volatility expressed through the charts. So we see that this short-term volatility, we've made actually an alert about that on the last weekly update, right before this even should show have started to occur. So now this is just pure short-term volatility. And as you can see in a daily and weekly chart, we can barely see this, okay? We can see that the market is trying to go down. I'd like to see it at least closing below the context. That would be the bare minimum. We've seen that Solana has already, has already done that, but to consider Bitcoin, which is in my humble opinion, the king of crypto. Well, that means closing daily charts below 15k is a bare minimum and we don't want to close at 15k we want to close below if we have such a thing i will start to say well this is concerning folks if we do not and if for whatever reason this is just a shit show that even if it doesn't resolve i'm not saying ftx has to be bailed out or whatever if this is just we've already anticipated all and if everyone is now switching to the bear market stuff because well ftx is going to take months or quarters to solve well, all I'm saying is that if just a few days from now we're back up at 20, then this was the bottom, folks. And we never ever lifted, uh, we, we never ever left this area. We just let you believe we would. Though in that perspective, it's way too early to consider this entry of a bear market to say that we're uh, uh, off from several months of consolidation following. It is the case. If we get there, well, don't get me wrong, this is the uh, uh, desert crossing phase. It's going to take months of absolutely destroyed volatility until we consider eventually going right back up again. But until then, well, yes, it's going to be another shit show, absolutely boring markets going down day by day, just no volatility ever. We're just going to replay everything that we've experienced through the last quarter again, but at a lower stage level. So th yes, this can very well happen. Like I said, this is what the chart says for now, but that doesn't mean it is settled. And that's the really the, the important reason. Whatever dangerous stuff uh, is going to come out of FTX within the next few days and weeks, we're already pretty low, folks. And that's where I'd like to warn everyone. I see people now forecasting the future. FTX is so tremendously, profoundly implicating the crypto market. We have no other way around but to go down. That's not what the charts tells me, okay? Not on the good assets. Ethereum, do I see the third impulse? No, certainly not. For now, I see the market saying, well, we're gonna go there. Well, I don't see any way you can break value in here. The only thing you can do is go there and bam. So yeah, we can go lower, we can, but we're certainly not gonna settle value out there. And most importantly, like I said, if we're rich, if we're just one inch back up, and if we break the latest resistance, everyone will be bull. Not because this market is so strong, but just because there's no more sellers. And that's exactly what you need to understand. Sure thing. Now everyone says we're full of new sellers, the liquidation, we're back in the shit show. There are no buyers and we have some forced sellers. What happens if we're done? Meaning that there's no more sellers. Just an inch of a buyer will make prices rise significantly. That's really the thing that happens in ranges. At the bottom of ranges, you will have to find some sellers. But right now I see none. Most of the supply is held by long-term holders like me who don't give a fuck. I'd like to be straightforward with this. It's the same thing for Adam. Do you see a third bearish impulse? I see absolutely no such a thing. It's still rising bottoms and stuff like that. Bitcoin doesn't look bearish to me. If for just a few days, we were just right back up at 20, it would just be an external event that triggers some stop losses of weak hands, just for whatever reason, to leverage getting stopped out or whatever. And that's the reason why we need to close on a final thought. My personal opinion all along has been, I don't know what the fuck you do in crypto, but I know what I want to do. So I've always made it clear a significant portion of my portfolio, it's nearly half of it, is a one-way trip. 
I'm not going out. I'm not selling those cryptos back into euros or dollar or whatever bullshit fiat currency you live in. But this is basically what my plan was all along. There's half of it, which is never going to be sold ever again. I'm transitioning to what I think is the future of finance, uh, uh, of saving uh, in a much more uh, transparent crypto market, or just financial market in which you can't cheat, you can't create. Uh, uh, money out of nowhere to solve whichever problem you think have to be solved without even ever even thinking about consulting uh, the public or whatever. You, you have unelected folks who basically decide, yeah, we're going to create billions to save this bank. Well, well, okay, good luck. Uh, not going to work to me. So this is why we need to settle two different things. There are the currencies we use to live as a society and to make day-to-day -day exchanges, buy some food uh, and stuff like that. And there is this, the, the financial system, the money that creates and allocate capital to the most efficient possible way. This is the beauty of markets. So of course, I've always said this financial market we have today, which is dangerously trying to mix both of them, uh, both of these aspects, will obviously fail. We've created a dangerous system that simply can't work. So we need to separate both. And in that perspective, yes, we need cryptocurrencies and we need fiat currencies uh, to do two different things. So in that perspective, I, I've always made it clear, I'm taking some of my fiat today, which is destined to savings, okay? I'm not taking on the money that I need to live, and that money, I'll put it into crypto on a one-way trip. Though in that perspective, to illustrate that, what matters to me is just that I would like to let you understand that I personally look at my account this way. What that is, of course, I have... Uh, chosen to hide um, the vertical axis so you don't have the row numbers but this is the, no more than a bitcoin uh, uh, chart which means this is my equity curve of my crypto account okay both the speculative and the one-way trip uh, combined on bitcoin level so basically this is what i've managed to do i personally always made my switch i think in the future the value of an investment portfolio will be measured in bitcoin so of course, yesterday has been crazy volatile and I took a dip of 30% of the dollar value of my portfolio. But you know what? I don't see any change in the Bitcoin value of my portfolio. And this is what matters to me. This is my long-term game. I want to get as much Bitcoin value I can get without taking too much risk in between. Meaning that, yes, at some point I do use margin trading, but not necessarily for the investment part of the portfolio, which is always going to be spot, self-custodied, and stuff like that. So in that perspective, yesterday is even barely visible in that perspective, in that grand scheme of things. So yeah, that's what I would like to say. For those of you who are in here for the long run, well, we're just in, in the early days. It's just got started in 2021 to me. And for those who were there in a longer journey, who've experienced 2018 and so on, you've even probably started way longer than that. So in that perspective, this is the game. Try to get some value and have some plans. My plan is just to get more Bitcoins without taking too much risk trying to get more and more and more. I'm not just going greedy in Bitcoin. I'm just trying to safely safeguard my risk taking to get the most I can. Though in terms of my personal perspective, I think I'm still doing my job pretty well. Of course, it's painful on a day-to-day -day basis to have all of those wallets and stuff like that displaying big dollar value and to see them fluctuating so violently. But to be honest, well, I'm not hiding myself in denial to say, well, this is too volatile. I'd like to look at Bitcoin. It's just because it's my plan all along. I just will use cryptos to get more Bitcoin value. Bitcoin is the store of value of cryptocurrency. So you should look, if you believe in the crypto thesis, you should look at the Bitcoin value of your portfolio, not the dollar value. The dollar is just a gateway, a bridge in between the existing financial system and the further one and the next one to come. So in that perspective, yes, it will be volatile. Those who gamble on the fact that they will be able to buy at the bottom. Well, like I said, good luck with that. I know well about my job. I've seen a lot of traders come and go. Well, those with those assumptions that, well, I'm going to bet it all that we're going to go down to the bottom and I'm going to buy it all at the bottom. I know these guys. They don't last very long. Okay, so try to think average, try to think value. These are the guys who survive over time when it comes to investment and stuff like that. Okay, 
the pure traders and the like that are fantasies of Wolf of Wall Street and stuff like that. These are the guys who have 10 years career in trading at best, no more than that, okay? The big ones, those who actually do the job correctly, the Warren Buffetts and the like, do you really think they bought the bottoms of apples and stuff like that? No, they just picked up the good ones and had a long-term plan. They figured out a way to put that plan into motion and they've executed correctly. That is talent to me, okay? So traders of whoever bought the lows just to sell and get some dollars in between, well, that's another job. Like I said, that's not the one we talk about in this channel. I respect those who do, okay? But once again, that, his, that still has a bit of a limit. And to my humble opinion, that limit has been crossed uh, over the latest 48 hours. You might be a trader, you might be happy about the fact that there was tremendous volatility and you made a shitload of money. Just for once in a while, take some time, step back and think about the people who got hurt in this process. So at least shut the fuck up, okay? That's really what, uh, what I wanted to say, okay? It really requires you to step down a bit. You might have made some money, but if some others died in this process, well, at least keep it quiet, okay? So that being said, uh, I, I'm not, uh, happy today. Some people are definitely, definitely uh, have been hurt. And I don't know what to say to those who have ev who had everything in FTX. I don't know what the future is going to be out of. Okay. But in that perspective, for the others, either those who have purely speculative portfolio, you're trying to multiply your dollar value today. Well, good luck with that. That's not what I do. But for the others, those who are here for the long run and will try to navigate the volatility and try to find the cycles correctly, of course, no one knows the future. I've made it clear back then. I thought the bottom was in. Turns out in terms of pure price, the bottom is not in. We've made new lows in Bitcoins and so on. But in terms of value measurement, we did not make new lows. We just broke prices due to an external catalyst. So it will take by the end of the month to figure it out. If it still trades, lower than the levels we've mentioned, then in that perspective, I will fully publicly acknowledge that I was goddamn fucking wrong with this bear market and will definitely be in. Well, we in one, but I'll figure it out right by the end of it, which means personally, I will take no advantage of that situation because I've already put in my cash in. So that's really what this is all about. I'll still have some spare cash for the final, final event of the uh, desert crossing phase if it ever occurs, but that's gonna be it. And that's going to be marginal increase in investment. I'm not about those who sold at the top and hold it all along until the end of the crazy bear market happens. I never made that bet. And I'm going full public with this. Okay, I'm probably not the best trader of that crypto market out there. But in terms of investing, I think I know my shit in trading as well. But long term trading isn't an easy task, specifically when you are in disruptive technology stuff. Okay. But my goal all along has always been trying to get as much Bitcoin value as I could. And in that perspective, I think I still have done a good job. And yesterday hasn't changed anything so far. That being said, I wish you guys a pleasant day. Uh, I hope you're going to survive. And just, I mean, think about uh, um, uh, the grief cycle for those who've been hurt badly, okay? So this is all there is left for you guys to do, okay? So just take your time and follow the process of this, okay? Just take on plenty of stuff available on the internet and just take the five steps of grief. There's nothing else you can do, guys, okay? So I'm really sorry for you. Uh, like I would say, I'm sorry for your loss. I've never seen that one coming. I've always said, don't go to Terra Luna bullshit stuff because I saw this one coming. I never saw FTX coming down. So if you came down the road with it and if you're taken down the road, well, I'm sorry for your loss. Hopefully you'll get some of that money back. It will probably take years. No one knows for now. And whoever tries to give you the answer is just an asshole. So I don't know. And there's nothing else I can tell you. Bye, guys.